Okay, in this problem we're going to go over diluted earnings per share for a complex capital structure. The problem starts by saying Hill's, Hill Inc.'s capital structure is as follows. And they have 2011 220 outstanding 220,000 outstanding shares of common stock and in t by the end of 2012 they have 294,000 shares of outstanding common stock. They have 12,000 shares of non-convertible, non-cumulative preferred stock and $800,000 worth of 10% convertible bonds. So, the following information is available. On September 1st, 2012, Hill sold 74,000 additional shares of common stock. They had net income for the year ended December 31st, 2012 of 920000 During 2012, Hill declared and paid dividends of $6 per share on its preferred stock. The 10% bonds are convertible into 50 shares of common stock each for, for each $1,000 bond. Unexercised options to purchase 25,000 shares of common stock at $24 per share were outstanding at the beginning and end of 2012. The ending market price of Hill's common stock was 20, was for 2012 was $34 per share. Warrants to purchase $36,000 36,000 shares of common stock at $36 per share were attached to the preferred stock at the time of issuance. The warrants which disp which expire on December 31st, 2017 were outstanding at December 31st, 2012 and Hill's effective income tax rate was 30% for 2011 and 2012. So what the problem wants us to do is figure out basic EPS for the year ended 2012 and compute diluted EPS or earnings per share for 2012. So for basic earnings per share these are our numbers Net income of 920,000, um, you get that from this right here. Dividends on preferred stock, you have 12,000 shares times $6. Um, during 2012, Hill declared and paid dividends of $6 per share on its preferred stock. So, <clears throat> you subtract the $72,000 and you have the net income applicable to common stock is $848,000. Then we need to find weighted average shares. So, from January 1st to September 1st, we had 220,000 shares. Um, that's right here, 220,000. And then we sold uh, 74,000 additional shares of common stock. That raised that to 294,000. So for eight months out of the year in 2012, we had the 220,000. So you times those, that's 146,667. From September 1st to December 31st, we had 294,000. So you times that by 4 twelfths because we had 294,000 common shares outstanding for four months out of the year. That's 98,000. You add those together, and that gives you 244,667. If we divide that, um, if we divide the net income applicable to common stock of 848,000 by the weighted average number of shares 244,667 we get earnings basic earnings per share of $3.47 okay now we need to find diluted earnings per share so <clears throat> on these convertible bonds 10% convertible bonds eight hundred thousand dollars we need to test for dilution 
So you take the interest net of tax per $1,000 bond. So somewhere in here it mentions, okay, so what you do is you find their effective tax rate. Hill's effective income tax rate was 30%. So <clears throat> you have a $1,000 bond times 10% interest, but then you multiply that number by 70%, and it's paying out um, $70 in interest per bond. So you divide that by the number of shares, um, and you get a dollar forty per share. Okay, we need to mention the or explain the fifty, I guess. The ten percent bonds are convertible into fifty shares of common stock for each one thousand dollar bond. Okay, so that's that makes it clear. Um you have the seventy dollars paid out in interest net of taxes per one thousand dollar bond and each one of those one thousand dollar bonds is convertible into fifty shares so you divide that seventy dollars by fifty shares that gives you an earning per or an incremental EPS of a dollar forty and it is less it's less than three forty seven per share so it is dilutive that's what that means so then we go back and we take the net income applicable to common stock, um, net income for diluted EPS, sorry, net income for basic EPS right here, and then we add interest expense, net of taxes on convertible bonds. You have 800,000 times the 10% times 70 to give you net of taxes. That's $56,000. So you add those two together and you get nine hundred and four thousand okay now we need to find the weighted average uh, shares outstanding for basic EPS or we don't need to find that we already did that we then we figure out incremental shares so you have the two forty four six six seven for basic EPS then if we assume that um, these options are exercised Unexercised options to purchase 25,000 shares of common stock at $24 per share were outstanding. The ending market price of Hill's common stock at the end of 2012 was $34 per share. So with that information, on the assumed exercise of options for 25,000 shares, um, then you subtract the repurchase so you you assume that the shares would be repurchased from the proceeds of the options um, so you take the 24 25,000 shares times 24 dollars per share that is $600 then $600,000 then you take the $600,000 and you divide that by the $34 ending price and that gives you 17,647 shares. If you take that away from the options, uh, number of shares in the op number of shares from the options of 25,000, that leaves you a 7,353. 7, so those are the incremental shares. Add that to 244,667. That gives you 252,020. And then you have the shares assumed to be issued on the conversion of bonds. 800,000 divided by 1,000 times 50. That gives you 40,000 more shares. You add that to 252,020. And then you divide this number, net income for diluted EPS, by 292020, and that gives you diluted earnings per share of $3.10 per share. <clears throat>